We start the noon today with a shooting investigation going on right now in Denver. Investigators say they found a woman hurt at 44th and Cook. That's near I-70 in Colorado. She was taken to the hospital, but we don't know about her condition. Police haven't released any information about a suspect at this point. We will, of course, bring you updates as we get them. Today, a judge overseeing the election interference case out of Georgia is letting former President Trump appeal a ruling regarding the Fulton County DA. Last week, a Georgia judge ruled that Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis could stay on the case if Nathan Wade, the special prosecutor she appointed, resigned. Wade did so that afternoon. Attorneys for Trump and his co-defendants had accused Willis and Wade of misconduct regarding their romantic relationship. At that point, the defendants could not directly appeal that decision and had asked a judge to approve a certificate of immediate review. That puts this matter before an appeals court. The state court of appeals now has 45 days to decide whether to hear that appeal, and the appeal has to be filed in 10 days. During a radio interview this week, former President Trump signaled that he would support a national ban on abortion after 15 weeks of pregnancy, with the exception in cases of rape, incest, or when the life of the mom is endangered. Trump said that 15 weeks seems to be a timeline that more people are agreeing on. The former president also said that he would make an announcement on what specific limits on abortion he would support at the appropriate time. He also then went on to say that it should be left to the states to decide. A controversial gun bill at the state capitol is now headed to the full house after a late night for lawmakers. This wrapped up overnight past midnight and they had started this conversation at 10 a.m. After hours of testimony, the House Judiciary Committee advanced a ban on a so-called assault weapons. The bill defines assault weapons as a 50 caliber rifle or a semi-automatic firearm with detachable magazine and a modification like a pistol grip or a muzzle brake. There are exceptions to allow members of the military and law enforcement to have those weapons. The 7-3 committee vote, which was along party lines, came just after midnight. The bill now goes to the full House, where Democrats do have a supermajority. But it may not make it past the state Senate, and even if it does, Governor Polis has expressed some skepticism about it. And should it become law, it could quickly get tied up in court because gun right advocates have already promised to sue. Well, we are continuing to learn more about a chase that led to a man's death in Aurora. Yesterday, we told you the driver in that chase was a teenager. Aurora's interim police chief says officers followed the department's policy during that chase. It started with an armed carjacking Sunday night. Police say an officer saw that stolen Jeep minutes later, then tried to stop it, and the driver took off. The chase lasted about four blocks until the Jeep crashed into a row of cars, killing Oliver Jose Zeladon Gongora, who was just parking in front of his house house when he was hit. Interim Aurora Police Chief Heather Moore says at this point she does not see anything that suggests that the officers violated department policy and that there are a lot of factors that are taken into consideration. You know, I could give a bunch of examples, um, but essentially, you know, maybe somebody did commit a violent crime, but maybe it's been several weeks. So that's going to be taken into consideration as well is the time distance from whenever the incident happened or even a stolen vehicle. If, if this was a stolen vehicle that had not just occurred, then that may be a different evaluation. A critical incident team with officers from multiple agencies is now investigating. U.S. 40 near the Berthoud Pass is back open. This is a picture tweeted by a viewer in that area. CDOT was in reporting earlier that an avalanche had closed that road, but the road did reopen in the last 45 minutes. Want to give you a live look out near Horsetooth Reservoir. What a stunning way to celebrate the first day of spring today. Giving you a live look over Greeley as well. We've got sunshine and blue skies and dare we say it, halfway to the weekend. We're already looking forward to it. <laughs> we have Keely joining us and what a great way to start spring. It's like the exact what you would expect for this time of year. Absolutely. Beautiful blue skies, lots of sunshine, mild uh, weather out there, temperatures warmer than normal for this time of the year. But we do have a taste of winter in the forecast as well. And it arrives Saturday night into Sunday in the form of colder temperatures as well as snow. But let's talk about the situation out there right now because it is beautiful. We have got mostly sunny skies. Temperatures quite nice. We're at 48 degrees right now in Denver, 45 in Greeley. Head to the south and look at those temperatures already in the 60s. We're at 66 in Lamar, 62 in Pueblo. So we are going to be warming up nicely as we head into the afternoon. Not too much going on. We are quiet out there. We've got high pressure building in 
and that is going to bring us some warm temperatures. Just a little bit of moisture moving up from the south, bringing us some light snow showers, mainly up there in the high country. May see some sprinkles of rain here in the metro area as we head into the evening. So your forecast for today, warmer than normal, mostly sunny, 62. We'll break down the timeline of when the next storm moves in, coming up in your full forecast in just a bit. All right, thanks so much for that. We do want to get to a traffic alert for you. The I-70 Floyd Hill project is expanding, so that means changes for your drive. Nine News reporter Courtney Yoon has more on the impacts you can expect as you're going through that area. Beginning today, CDOT is expanding the I-70 Floyd Hill project westward, which could have some travel impacts on your commute throughout the mountains. Now, this is all happening in the area that I'm in right now, which is between the Central City Parkway exit and the Idaho Springs Colorado Boulevard exit. Here's a map of the section that I'm talking about. That purple area is where CDOT is focusing on next. Improvements in the west section of this project include straightening curves to improve safety and reconstructing two bridges over Clear Creek. They'll also be adding a westbound express lane that extends from the top of Floyd Hill through the Veterans Memorial Tunnel. Throughout the summer, you can expect to see traffic impacts like overnight lane closures. CDOT also wants to remind drivers to slow down in work zones and not to change lanes unnecessarily. Sometime next week, crews will be shifting westbound I-70 traffic toward the median, median that'll be between the Beaverbrook exit and the US-6 interchange. Now, during that time, you'll see narrower lanes and shoulders there, but if you want to stay updated on this project, you can actually text see that uh, text the word Floyd Hill with no space to 21000 and that'll give you alerts on when they're doing rock blasting or any scaling on the highway, which can cause intermittent shutdowns of the roads. Courtney Yoon, 9 News. New at noon, we've now learned that fitness personality Richard Simmons has been diagnosed with skin cancer. On Facebook today, Simmons said that he had sought medical care after he found a strange bump under his right eye. According to his post, Simmons saw a specialist to remove the cancer cells. Unfortunately, the first attempt did not remove it all, so then he had to go back for a second procedure. He ended his post with to be continued. Simmons was diagnosed with basal cell carcinoma, and according to the Cleveland Clinic, basal cell carcinoma is the most most common type of cancer. It's usually treated successfully with surgery. 